Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Low Season Traveller Insider Guides, brought to you in partnership with our very good friends at Tourism Island. I'm Jed Brown, your host for this week's episode, and for today's episode we head back over to Dublin, where I spent a wonderful three days in the low season month of January earlier this year. With clear blue skies, low crowds, and plenty of things to experience and do, Dublin rarely disappoints in the winter months. And what better way to pass the time than meeting up with some wonderful people like today's guest, Ronan Lynch. Ronan is a third generation Dublin publican, whose family have been running the Swan Bar in Anger Street for the past 85 years. And as the Swan has been standing here since 1661, it is, as you would expect, like stepping back in time to set foot in a true Irish pub. And Ronan pointed out to me that this is a drinking pub. It's a place for drinking, conversation, crack, and perhaps a little rugby banter. So grab a pint and join us for this short conversation in one of the oldest, least touristy pubs in the whole of Dublin. It's an absolute gem. Enjoy. So Ronan, you're most welcome to the Low Season Traveller Inside the Guides podcast. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Um, look, first of all, if you could just introduce yourself and introduce where we're having this conversation because it's quite an amazing uh, pub that you have here. Yeah, so my name is Ronan Lynch. I'm a third generation Dublin publican. And my family are here in the Swan Bar and Angel Street. We've been here for 85 years. The pub has actually been here since 1661. Yeah. Um, the bar that we have here at the moment, that we're standing here at the moment, dates from 1897, which it makes one of uh, very few uh, intact Victorian pubs that are left in Dublin. So we're very, very fortunate to have such a, I suppose, a living kind of museum. And um, yeah, it it's really is a spectacular bar. It is, you know, we was, we, we've just been sort of speaking a little bit before and um, you were sort of saying, yeah, it is a bit like a living museum. It's It's one of the one of the very few original pubs around. And we were talking before, and I'm not going to be, look, I'm not going to be hugely critical of, um, of that area of Dublin Temple Bar, but it's fair to say that a pub like the Swan is, this is a real, authentic Irish pub, right? Yeah, yeah like, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, there's all, every pub comes in shape, different shapes and sizes, like we've 700 pubs in Dublin, and I suppose Temple Bar, kind of pedestrianised area, which is just kind of, you know, got the name for, and it's synonymous with tourism but i mean there's a lot of there's a lot to offer in pubs like as i said like there is a number of these pubs in dublin city center uh, victorian pubs and there's also modern pubs you know there's cocktail bars you know there's something for everybody and we're very very fortunate to have fantastic bars in dublin city like i mean like our bar like 1897 that has the original whiskey barrels cash kiosk marble counter wow. original taps mosaic floor you know, back bar is all mahogany. Like it's a serious kind of piece of work. Like it'd be priceless to put it in there, but there's so much to offer. Dublin has so much to offer in the pubs. Like I really think, and I will be biased in saying this, that we do have the best pubs in the world in Dublin. I would agree with that. And the, the, you know, the, it's it's intriguing to me because um, I'm one of these people where, wherever I travel in the world, I seek out the Irish, the Irish pub, the Irish bar because I, I guess I'm kind of interested in the fact that when I go somewhere in the world. My assumption, rightly or wrongly, is if you find a an Irish an Irish pub, and I am using those air brackets for any of our listeners out there, um, that you're going to get a little bit of a welcome. But it was like you, you were just saying to me before how you know the pub has always been the centre of the of the community in Ireland, right? Yeah, it's it's always been the place to meet. It's a neutral ground where people can go and socialise and meet their friends or meet their family or make friends and just have a quiet time, whether it be on their own. And there's always little nooks and crannies where they can sit on their own or meet people or whatever. And it's just always at the forefront of Irish culture. And it's amazing because when tourists come to Ireland, the first thing they want to do is they want to go to an Irish bar, sit down and have a pint of Guinness because that's kind of, yes, I'm in Ireland and get the picture. And it's really, really a big thing. And we're very fortunate to have such a pub centric product like Guinness and it does mm. taste a lot better in Dublin it does Definitely. taste different Guinness does not travel so if you're coming over to Ireland make sure you sit down at a bar get your pint of Guinness watch the craft watch it being put up there let it settle and by all means thoroughly enjoy it yeah absolutely um, one of the other things that you were just saying before is um, you were saying in, in this in this pub that we're in here now the, the Swan you were saying you you know you have a variety of 
your clientele. I mean, it's pretty varied, right? Yeah, it's like it's from everybody. Like, and it doesn't matter because, as I always say, the pub is the people's church. That's what it yeah. is. Like, people come in, they can come in and they can social. Like, we can have the ordinary guys who work in Dublin City Council, Sweep and Street, to Hollywood A listers, to international best selling authors. But the great thing is, they can come to a pub, sit down on their own, mind their own business, or socialize with people if they want. That is, you can't get that anywhere else in the world. It's just totally unique. It's totally Irish. And like, we're very, very fortunate to have this great kind of institution that is the Irish pub. Yeah. And people try to copy it. Like when you said you go to other places in the world, you're getting that consistency or some semblance of what yeah. you have in Ireland. People just love that consistency. The Irish pub has just a great intimacy that you just don't get anywhere else. Yeah, I love that. And it's, it's true. Ireland is one of those places, I think, as well. Um, I guess I, I've always known this, but again, for our listeners, is for me, you know, coming over here, trying to interview locals um, on, on different aspects of Irish culture. Um, most of the podcast guests that we've got during these three days, it's been through people who I've been speaking to, and then they're saying, oh, listen, you've got to speak to such and such. It's that... That's what you get in Ireland that you don't really, certainly you don't get it in the UK as much, I don't think. Yeah, but the local knowledge, like, because yeah. you have people who know, you know, the best places to go. And that's, yeah. and that's why when people come into a pub, like, they go to me, where should I stay? Where should I eat? Where do I get my hair cut? Where do I buy yeah. this? Where do yeah. I get that? And you can just tell them everything and just hit the spot. So it actually, like, when you go to Ireland, by all means, walk into any bar, but you know, anywhere, and you will get the local knowledge about the best things to do or wh whatever you're going to do during the duration of your stay. So in essence, like, I think it's like a, a kind of unofficial tourist office. Yeah. And we just tell everybody, you know, the best places to go and, you know, they get lost, they're stopping for a coffee, the kids are hassled, somebody's sick. You know, you get it all in the pub. We're very fortunate. And we do our best to accommodate the people and get them sorted. I love that, I love that. Listen, I'm not going to take up too much of your time because you're very busy, you're doing a little bit of a refit, you're having rooms. We are going to have, uh, hopefully I'm told, um, six rooms, uh, double on suite rooms, Air, that'll be kind of ready for Airbnb probably in June, we'll go with June at this stage, so we're, we're getting ready in preparation for that, so we're a bit uh, under pressure at the moment, but we're getting there. Brilliant, well, hopefully... Uh, I'll see you. Maybe I'll, I'll come over with the missus and we'll, uh, we'll stay over here. But um, for all of our listeners out there as well, um, definitely a great spot to, uh, to come in and enjoy a pint and come and meet Ronan and the gang uh, over this one. But thanks a million for your time, Ronan. Appreciate it. No problem it. at all. Thank you very much. So there you have it. And you can learn more about The Swan by visiting theswanbar.com where you'll be able to see the pub for yourself, and indeed, later this year, you'll be able to stay at the Swan when they open their new accommodation, which promises an experience true to the style of this old world pub. In the next episode, we continue our low season Dublin trip as we head over to meet Simon from the Museum of Literature Ireland in a fascinating conversation where we learn more about Ireland's rich history of writers and we try to find out just how it came to be that such a small nation with modest population was able to produce such an incredible number of literary legends. But that's our show for this week. Thanks, as always, for your company. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please do leave us a positive rating and review on your podcast app. And also don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn to be the first to hear our latest low season stories, articles, and guides. Have a great week wherever you are. And remember that travel is always better and fairer for the planet, the local communities, and you, the travelers, when it's without the crowds. <laughs>